Hey, what's going on everybody? In this video, we're gonna take a look at creating a waffle dome structure in Revit with an Oculus. So right here in a uh, 3D section, you can get a good sense of where we're headed. Uh, the big part of this video is going to be getting the uh, waffle effect inside of our dome. And uh, we'll be creating some custom families for that. And this is our inspirational image, the Parthenon. Um, so good example of architecture with an oculus using a dome shape as well as a waffled recess pattern to reduce the weight of that uh, dome structure being made out of concrete. Okay, so without further ado, let's get into uh, a new project here. So we're going to go to a uh, new project and here I'm using architectural template uh, and project and saying okay. And a shout out to Lay Ben for his comments uh, on some of my other videos in the past on the best way to go and make this dome. So I'm going to go up to the, uh, well, before I go to massing and site, I'm just going to draw a reference plane here. I could be sketching on like an elevation view, but I just want to show you that when we make a reference plane, we can use it to host a massing sketch. And so here I'm just going to call it um, dome. And now I'm going to go to uh, an elevation view. So let's say like our north elevation. And I'm going to go to the massing and site tab. And we're going to go to an in place mass. And we're just going to say OK. With our in place mass, we're going to set our work plane. And we are going to pick the name of the plane. We're going to use the reference plane dome. And so this could exist anywhere in my project, wherever I drew a reference plane. Now we're sketching on that plane, and we're gonna just draw a uh, vertical line to represent where the center of our dome is. And then the distance from that vertical line is gonna represent our oculus. So if I wanted to, I could have drawn other reference planes uh, or other geometry, or let's just say I wanted to have a uh, eight foot uh, diameter. So I'm gonna draw a four foot line just as a target for a radius, and then let's say at the bottom, I knew I was gonna have like a base of this dome of let's say being like 60 feet in diameter, so I'm gonna draw like a 30 foot line. And then from here, we're gonna do a three point arc. You can do whatever kind of geometry you want. So I'm just gonna make a big swooping arc, and then clicking on that, those lines, um, I do want to uh, disconnect this line here. And so if I hit tab and then click on it, If I hit tab, I can select the individual line. There we go. And then from here and here, Rev is pretty smart. We select those two, and let's go to a 3D view of this and select those two. We can then go to create form, solid form, and it gives me an option. Do I want just like a plane, or do I want a, uh, a sweeping arc around that center point? And that's what we want. With those uh, two pieces of mass uh, picked out, I want to select them both by hitting control and then go to divide. Um, this is this is fine, but we can change these numbers up if we want. And click on divide surface. And here we go. We have our surfaces divided into some uh, segments. And then if I click on one of these surfaces, we do want to see the nodes on it. And so I have one selected. I'm going to hit this little fly out arrow. It's very discreet. I'm going to click on nodes and say OK. I want to do the same thing on the other side, so I'm going to click on that. I'm going to hit the little fly out arrow, click on nodes, and say OK. So now I have all of these nodes that are part of my, my dome structure. For right now, let's just say finish mass. And now we have this mass created. Now we need to go in and customize uh, a family. So I'm going to go up to file, and we're going to go new, and we're going to say family. And I'm going to go to my English Imperial folder. We're going to go to curtain panel pattern based and say open. The nodes that we just show represent these nodes here. And this is representing with reference planes, basically um, the space that a panel would take up uh, within the mullions. These blue lines represent the mullions of a curtain system. And so essentially any way these, uh, these lines end up changing, our, our pattern will follow this but we do have to dimension it properly, so that's what this part of the video is all about. I'm gonna go and click on a uh, point, and I'm just gonna snap that to the center point on this uh, pattern. 
Then I'm gonna go and draw out roughly, the, the dimensions don't actually matter right now. I'm gonna go and draw out a profile. Uh, before I do that, I should probably set my work plane. So set work plane, and we're gonna click on this dot. And if we wanna see it, we can zoom out. You can see that I'm sketching perpendicular to this path of the uh, profile. We're gonna, we're gonna end up sweeping this path here. So I'm gonna unshow that. And now we're sketching on that plane, so I know I'm drawing in the correct dimension. I'm gonna draw uh, with my pattern facing kind of up. Um, you'll see the profile facing up. So I'm gonna draw going across, and once again, the, the, the sizes don't really matter. And I'm gonna go up and over and up and over, and we're gonna snap. And did I not have chain on? I should have had chain on. So that would make that a lot easier. And now I, I probably don't want chain on, so I'm gonna uncheck it just to fill in these lines. When you do this, check chain, and that'll save you some extra clicks. Okay, so now with this, I have my pattern, and I have this. I do need to make this parametric. So let's go to uh, the Create panel, and we're gonna go to Aligned, and do it from this dot. Make sure you click exactly on those dots. I do need to set a new work plane, so forgive me for a second here. Let's set our work plane to be this line. And then let's do the create aligned and now choose the dots. And then let's set our work plane again over here. And with that set, choose the two dots. Cool. And then we need to um, dimension some other things on our profile, but we'll do that in just a moment. Hit escape a couple times, click on the first dimension and click on uh, create parameter, and here I'm gonna call it uh, M1 for Mullion 1, and it's going to be a instance parameter, reporting parameter, so check reporting and check instance and say okay. And then this one here, we're gonna click on that, we're gonna click on the create parameter button, and this one we're gonna call M2, so Mullion 2, and we're gonna make it instance and reporting and say okay. And then we uh, are pretty good on those outside dimensions, making them parametric. Now we need to make these dimensions affect the profile. And so with the profile, we are going to uh, set our work plane to the dot. And let's just double check by seeing it with show. Okay, it's on the sketch. And let's set the uh, dimensions for this one. So we're gonna go to create aligned this line in this line and then I want to do this line and this line for our major two and let's see escape a couple times and let's get these ones set up so this one here I'm going to go to my edit parameter here I'm going to call it P for profile one and this one's going to be an instance but we are not going to check reporting parameter and then uh, this one here Gonna hit the parameter button and say uh, instance, and this one's gonna be P2. Capitals do matter, I believe. All right, so now here we have our, our main outside dimensions. Let's set up the uh, properties on those parameters. So we have M1 and M2, and for the profile parameter one, we want that to be uh, whatever M1 is, let's just say plus, whatever M2 is in brackets, and let's divide that by uh, 10. And if we click off of that, we then get an updated uh, P1. Now we could just copy and paste this, or I think we can set P2 equal to P1, um, or we can change what it is. You know, So you can go and change in uh, whatever P1 and P2 are as a result of M1 and M2. So I'm just gonna use these numbers, say apply and okay. And it does update a little bit to give you an idea of proportion, uh, which is kind of nice. And I think I'm cool with this. And then let's just go and make the rest of the steps on this profile uh, equal. So I'm gonna go to create and we're gonna go to aligned and we're gonna choose this one. Well, actually, hold on, before we do that, click on this dimension and lock it and click on this dimension and it should be locked or lock. It. So both of these are locked. Once those are locked, now we can go and do create aligned, choose those steps in one direction, and just throw those up. They're nice and messy. Click on equal, 
and equally is either going to be at the bottom, uh, top or bottom. And then do the same thing in the other direction. So one, two, three, four, move it off to the side, click on equal. And now those are equally spaced. Then hit escape a bunch of times. Click your profile, hold down control, select the uh, path around, and say create form. The form will be created. And then hit escape a couple times, hit tab, and click uh, with the mouse on the edge. Click and select this. And let's change this to a material category of concrete. If you spell it right, you'll see it come up in the library. And here we go. So we're looking for concrete. Just cast in place or in situ, that's cool. And then say apply and OK. So now we have that as our concrete. And then we're going to go and save this. And so I already have one that was my test run. And so here I'm just going to save this as waffle panel. And we're going to say save. And then we're going to load this into our project and close. So load into project and close. And so you can see that I have my one right here that Revit's pretty smart. It's like, hey, do you want this? Um, project 2 is actually what I want. The testing was what I had before. Okay, so now that we have that loaded into our uh, project, what I'm going to do here is just close out of my other windows that I have open and close out of this one. And so now let's go to our 3D view of this project. And so with this dome, now um, I'm going to go and click on the mass that we made. Click on edit in place and click one of the two segments. So I'm going to work on this segment that's closest to me right now. And we're going to go up to the create panel and go to component. And we see that the one that we just made is loaded in. Now carefully place these. You can place them on any four going in the order uh, that you think, it, like don't go a zigzag, don't do a Z. Make sure you go one, two, three, four, just like this. And if you place those, you should see the waffle towards the inside. Now you have to click on, every, no, I'm just kidding. You don't have to click on every point. Hit escape a couple times. Click on this once, and then with that selected, where the array command typically is, you see repeat, click on repeat, and it's going to repeat that across your entire structure. <laughs> That's so cool. And I'm going to click on this other side here, and we're going to do the same thing. We're going to go to create component, and once again, any of the four dots, so one, two, three, Four. Make sure you accurately click. If you misclick, when you do repeat, it'll be uh, extrapolated and it's going to look really bad. So make sure you click accurately. Click on that after you hit escape a couple times. Click on repeat and it'll populate that for us. Awesome. Now we can click on finish mass. And so now we have our waffle uh, pattern. Now we just need to create the shell for this. So we're going to do that by going up to uh, massing in sight, and we're going to go to wall by face, and we're going to edit this uh, generic wall, duplicate it, and just call it concrete. Uh, let's make make it a, uh, I don't know, six inch concrete in combination with the waffle. That'll be thicker. So we're going to say edit, and we're going to change this to six, and we're going to do the same material that we had before. So concrete in situ, and OK, and OK. Now when we go to place this wall, I want the finish face interior on the surface that I click on. Nope, I lied, Control Z. We want finish face exterior, I guess. I thought it was the opposite before. But basically, make sure you choose one that doesn't hide your waffles. Okay, then with this, I'm gonna hit escape a couple times. I'm gonna click on the uh, concrete. We're gonna do uh, join. And I just really had to click on one to get the option to join. Now we joined our outer shell. And then let's take a look at this in 3D. So, uh, well, I mean in a 3D section. So let's go to our section view and just duplicate that view, duplicate. And in this duplicated 3D, let's just name it 3D section. So rename 3D section. And in the 3D section, let's go and scroll down and check the section box in the properties, section box in the properties. And then from there, let's go and just 
tighten our section box in nice and tight. And let's reveal what we've just done here with the uh, pattern. So with the Parthenon uh, inspiration image, um, there's a little bit of a, a cap that we see near the top. And so let's get this view looking nice here. Okay, we can take our section box and hide and view element. And then let's go to VV and we'll go all cut pattern override black solid fill. Okay, apply. Okay. All right, so now with this, um, we, we could leave it as is, but if you want to cap off this top, what I would recommend doing is going to east and clicking on a elevation line and just make one more for yourself at the very top and then go to the view tab and you want plan views, floor plan, and you want to see level three, say okay. Now it's in your project browser. In the project browser, um, we want to go to uh, underlay and see what's on level one. All right, and then now here we can go to architecture, we can go to wall. Here's your wall that you used before. Pick lines, wherever you pick, we can do wall center line and we can just click and click and then hit escape a couple times, click control and select both. And then from here, the base constraint is gonna be at level three, but let's make it go down a negative eight inches and then uh, top constraint unconnected and let's just make it go up uh, one uh, foot and see how that looks in our 3D section. And so this creates a little lip at the top and if we're happy with how that trims that off, we're good. If not, uh, which I am not, not happy with that, uh, we can go and change the base in my case. Uh, let's do a negative one foot at the base. Whoop, that's one inch, let's do that again. Apply, and let's check it out in 3D section. So I'm pretty happy with that. I'm pretty happy with how this Oculus looks now and how the Waffle Dome looks. Looking at it just plainly in 3D, right, we get a good sense of the underside of this dome. All right, if you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. Make sure to save and subscribe if you wanna see more videos like this one. And until then, I'll see you all next time.